enemy. Welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Casual with your boy, Base the Kid. What's wrong? Welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Casual with your boy, Base the Kid. As always, please like and subscribe, share with a friend, a colleague, a relative, an associate, an enemy, and anyone in between. I appreciate all the views, I appreciate the comments, and I appreciate the shares. Okay, I literally just recorded this video and then realized that I didn't put the mic on. So there is sound, but it doesn't sound good. I couldn't do that to you lot, so I had to re record it. Which is gonna piss me off a little bit because some of the vim that I had in some of the takes that I was given, I probably won't be able to replicate and I'm not gonna try and force it because I am not pretentious or false or fake in that way. However, this was actually just gonna be more of a discussion video about a certain topic, but something came up on my um, on my radar about an hour, hour and a half ago now, whereby I felt like, no, I had to address this. I had to speak about this. We had to, you know, we had to sort of get down and, and, and discuss it. So with that being said, we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna skip over to the main crux of what this video is supposed to be. Let's get into it. So, this came into my emails about, I say about an hour and a half ago now. Now, Frank Warren said that, you know, um, Anthony Yard would be back on the Zhang versus Joyce 2 card. Didn't give a name of an opponent, but we all felt, okay, well, it's not going to be like the biggest and best of opponents, but it should at least be like a decent one after the fight that he had, you know, previously against Artur Betebiev and acquitting himself well in the eyes of many people that he is in fact now a world level um, fighter. Uh, so we get in Ricky Summers. Ricky Summers, who is 19 and three with six KOs. So instantly that tells me that yet again, he's being put in with a non-puncher. Ricky Summers is also the same person that has only just won the English light heavyweight title on his second attempt. English, not British. So not full on domestic level. We're talking closer to area level opponent here. And this isn't a dig at Ricky Summers, by the way. But if Anthony Yard is supposed to be a, you know, I guess a, what, a top five, a top 10, light heavyweight in the world according to a lot of people then this is not acceptable now look i can understand if you say okay look he had a really hard fight back in january so you gotta kind of give him a bit of a comeback fight a lighter touch all right a lighter touch is fine but then there are credible people that he could fight now look if someone like i get richard rivera is probably way too dangerous at this point um you know he's you know a knockout merchant for lack of a you know 25 he's 26 fights 19 ko's so you know he can punch all right if you don't maybe want to have a step like that that's fine but you've got igor mccalkin um you've got matthew Baldelik. i mean he hasn't fought since he got knocked out by callum smith last year but he's a name he was you know a former european champion so people know and understand that he is at least of that level a level just maybe not quite full European level but you know in between British and European that sounds like a, a reasonable uh, example I mean you've also got Charles Foster the American uh, 22 on 1 he that would be a credible name outside of those what about Pavel Stipian who Joshua Bawatsi just fought in May who was gonna fight Callum Smith in March I mean, that would be a decent enough test. He looks like he'd be strong, durable, give you some rounds, give you some things to think about and work out. If not that one, why not uh, petition the, the EBU to fight Daniel Blender de Santos? I mean, he was named a mandatory challenger for the EBU title. Uh, Dan Aziz has now vacated that to take the Joshua Boazzi fight instead of, uh, you know, doing that mandatory. All right, so fight him and at least get a put a belt on the line 
a, a, you know, a decent level, a European level belt, which keeps you highly ranked, keeps you active. And then you can fight more European level guys until you until you're ready to step your way back up to the to the world level now unless of course this is like oh he's fighting now and then he's gonna fight again in december in a big in a big fight and then you know parlay that into another fight maybe april may time next year and then you get and you build that momentum and you you finally actually start banking those steps correctly this just seems like a waste of time I mean, you've been out of the ring now. It, by the time that comes up, it'll be almost nine months, and the and the fight you come back against is someone that's area level. I mean, I the thing is, I want y'all to do well. He is too old at this point to be taking these nothing fights. Every fight he's supposed to be having now is either supposed to be teaching him, or it's supposed to be testing him. This is gonna do neither. This is this is just. What could you is I can't even call it a cash grab because I can't imagine you get paid the big bucks to fight Ricky Summers on the undercard of a fight that's not even on pay per view. So I don't really get it, and this is why I've consistently said like when he goes up to these world level these world levels he loses. Better be have knocked out like Kovalev knocked out even domestic level at the moment it's like technically you're 50 50 on domestic level cool there we get it there, there might have been issues around i understand that but that still being said like it's not like you you've cleaned out this level to then say no i'm here and for people to want to put you in that category you have to be shown to at least be fighting people maybe one step below that i mean if you're fighting if people say normally you fight a level below your opponent or you fight a level below your level maybe two levels until you get until you're actually facing the world champions right well if he's supposed to be a world level guy then he's fighting someone about four four levels below so is he world level is he european is he fringe european is he actually in fact just british domestic level at this point now not sure and like I said, I actually want him to do well. I think he can get to certain to to a a promised land, but I don't know if a title is ever going to be in his future because to me they're doing the exact same thing with Anthony that basically was being done with Huey Fury. You fight nondescript fighter after nondescript fighter after nondescript fighter like basically in in the terms for them trash you know bin men you know you know journeyman whatever and then you take a really big fight a world level fight get found out get beat go back to just fighting bin man journeyman dust bin man like administrative worker in their country bricklayer go back up to world level get beat again come down and do the exact same thing the pattern just seems to be it seems to be that again if we look on the resume at this point and I don't like to keep harping on about this, but outside of Kovalev and Betabiev, there is not one solid name on there. Again, if we're talking about accomplishments, the biggest accomplishment he's had is against Lyndon Arthur for a Commonwealth title, which some people believe is below British. Okay, some people think it might be above, but that's that's the disparity we're, we're, we're looking at here so and people want to say that he's a he's a world level a world class fighter i can't see that if you're giving me ricky summers or you're giving me valiant efforts in knockout defeats i can't give you the same grace and credence that other people are giving you i just can't and i want to so this is really frustrating especially you just went on undefeated podcast the other day had a really good introspective sit down with them but i wanted them to even speak let's talk about the resume because that's something that seems to be lobbied against you when you do the pound for pound when we do these rankings especially like the british ones and whatnot get into that and understand why are you not taking any appropriate level fights before taking these big jumps that's that's what i want to know but look leave your comments down below let me know what you think i don't really want to dwell on it too much i've probably given it more time than I actually wanted to um that's not what this video primarily was about but it annoyed me when i got the email so 
I had to I had to address it. There's probably a lot of other things that I should really be talking about, but that's what I've chosen to do for this one. But yeah, leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Um, now let's get on to what this video is really about. So as we saw yesterday, Naoya Inoue totally dominated, battered and destroyed Stephen Callboy Steph Fulton inside eight rounds in Japan. Um, now. I've always thought that Anue was going to win the fight. I always thought level. I always said at worst, he is like on the same skill set as Stephen Fulton. And at best, he's probably, you know, above that, you know, and he's technical. He's a, he's a proper boxer. He's not just a puncher. Uh, you know, he's not like a wilder or anything like that. He's, you know, he's got defense. He's got offense angles movement like he's a he's an atg in the making uh almost i think now a guaranteed hall of famer regardless what happens with the rest of his career but this video isn't necessarily about no anyway like he'll get his flowers when they're due they're due now but when when it's time for him to properly get them he'll get them no no discussion no debates nothing like he is the guy um, and he deserves every single applaud that he he gets and yeah anyone who was saying oh this is this is going to show us what he's really about and whatnot like you know those people clearly don't watch anything outside of either the glamour divisions or outside of their country that being said what this video for me is to talk about stephen fulton so there's three trains of thought in my mind right now either he is not as good as people claim that he was he just didn't show up on the night or Noya Anue is actually better than even I thought he was because I, I thought that Fulton would give him some some tricky some tricky rounds in the first you know sort of the first five rounds I don't really subscribe to this whole he's a slick fighter type thing but I thought he got enough of a skill set to be able to you know trouble Anue for four four five rounds and until Anue really starts to like you know step on you know step on the gas apply that pressure and then start setting his own traps and you know just basically wearing wearing him down throughout the fight none of that happened like Fulton didn't manage to make any adjustment at all until maybe round four or five when he decided to start becoming a bit more aggressive in 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 the fight and you know he, he threw a couple shots he did land some decent shots I never gave him a round but I did give him a share of the seventh that's about as good as I could give him and then I knew he just thought okay you think you can hit me all right cool I'm gonna hit you and let's see let's see what happens moving forward but I have to imagine of the options I gave it's got to be somewhere in between options one and two because I always knew how good Anue was I, I didn't think he was you know to the level that he can make a quote-unquote world-class guy just look like a rank amateur but yeah I always knew he was levels uh, I always felt he was levels above Stephen Fulton anyway and I guess it was confirmed yesterday but my issue now is okay so is Fulton overrated compared to what people and when I say that I mean in terms of people thought he was the guy so does that mean he's actually not the guy and against people of similar levels he will get found out or did he just freeze it might be a bit of both it might be 70 30 50 50 60 40 however you look here but the video isn't even necessarily just about that the video is now there was a stat that's out at the moment and i can't remember if which one is the correct one but it's supposedly that right now um pbc fighters are 4 and 20 when it comes to facing top rank fighters it's either 4 and 20 or it's 5 and 21. so basically every time that they fight someone from across the street they get beat more or less and i have to wonder well why is that now is it just the fact that top rank just happened to always find the best and the finest talent around the world and around the US and PBC basically get the dregs and the and the, and the doldrums of of the divisions or is it that the PBC guys just 
aren't active enough, aren't taking the correct fights, they're not being given the right fights to build and progress their careers? Is it that they're not active enough? I kind of got to feel like it might be all of the above because all right, let's say for instance that naturally the PBC guys are actually more talented than the top rank guys for, for the most part. But what did they say? Hard work always beats talent when talent doesn't work hard, right? Well, these these top rank guys, they're always having a, a building fight that is leading them to their next test, to their next test. They're, they're being stepped up for the most part, unless obviously they're on the, the, you know, the biggest and biggest of money. They're being kept active. A lot of them are fighting three times a year four times a year like five times especially if they're if they're sort of more the the amateurs and the the you know the the novices sort of coming through the ranks they're, they're getting that momentum they're actually and every time they're not just in like a pointless keep busy which is fine you can have a lot of those keep busy, but they're actually in fights that are supposed to be a gradual step up each time and if they and if they're too far ahead that level then maybe they step them up a level and a half to see how they how they progress with that whereas in pbc it's like you fight once and then your next fight might be you might get a, a, a tick over fight seven or eight months later and then you might go into a big fight nine months after that i mean let's look at this for instance Stephen Fulton was out of the ring uh, 14 months before just facing the Nui you've got Amanda Stanionis who's been out of the ring about 14 15 months now now obviously that's you know that was due to issues with both him and Virgil Ortiz falling ill during camp but you kind of see it there um, Errol Spence Jr going into the biggest fight of his career 15 months out of the ring no tune up You've got Jamel Charlo against Canelo, 17 months out of the ring by the time that match comes around. And you're gonna, you know, and you're going into the biggest fight of your Jamal Charlo. Over two years not been in the ring and somehow still got a belt. And the list goes on and on. Like Gary Russell Jr., prior to the injury that he had, um, he was it was one fight a year. The probably the most even tank up until just sort of i guess maybe the the year just gone or the year that that sort of year because he was once maybe twice a year as well for a period of time like these guys just aren't fighting often enough david benavidez um J J uh, jaron ennis for instance last year he had four minutes i think it was like four minutes of boxing within like 13 months or whatever it was now yes he's fought twice this year which is good and hopefully he gets to fight another time sort of uh october november you get three fights and that's that's a good year especially by modern standards that's a very good year but just none of these men are fighting often enough and that probably tells you why they're very scared to 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 leave the island or al Heyman is very scared to send them off the island to go and face other people because they're not suitably prepared whether that's because they're not being matched correctly or because they just you know they just don't have the budget in order to get them the necessary rounds and you know to build them up to to have a better chance of winning these fights but then i look at it if like if that's the case and you've basically got um like you ha you've had one fight and then they haven't got the budget to get you back out again that year put them on you know put them on like retainer contracts like let them go off you know be the b-side on another on another broadcast or another channel send them to canada send them to mexico send them over to the zone send them over to top rank and um, to fight a prospect send them to the uk do a co-promotion with like frank warren over here or ben shalom Mick Hennessy, something, just send them over and make them have to earn their keep elsewhere. You say, okay, you win those fights, then you can come back next year and you can have another big fight for whatever the purse is that you, you know, that you wanted that we couldn't supply for this year because we didn't have the dates. Do that. And then if, you know, at least that way you keep the momentum up. If they're good enough, they're going to win on the road. They build their name because people are seeing them on multi-different platforms. They come back to you. They're a household name. You can put them on pay-per-view a lot quicker than you normally would. Like, to me, this seems to, this just seems sensible. Again, if, if they're not active enough because you don't have the dates, 
then let them go elsewhere. If they're not active enough because they want too much money, well then if that's the case, you, to be honest, half of the people that are, might be on quote unquote big money ain't even worth the money that they're on. They don't generate no revenue. They don't sell no pay-per-views. So you tell them, look, you either take this or we're just gonna cut up the contract. Cause we only want people here that's actually gonna be here. That's gonna, that's gonna work, that want to improve, want to grant. You know, even to the point, someone like David Morrell, for instance, great quality talent. I'm scared that he's going to start, you know, not fighting, probably not even due to money, but just due to lack of dates, lack of opportunities. But he seems to be switched on and understand what he needs to do. So I'm hoping that he will, you know, continue to get free four fights a year although with the issues that's happening now with david benavides he might not see action again for the end of this year um and then he would have only had what one two fights this year obviously one of them i no, the other one was last year so the um the you know the was it kazakhstani guy do you um i can't remember his name off the top of my head right now but yeah you guys remember the knockout he had in the 10th round of that of that fight there's that he had the fight this year against the brazilian guy who was a former olympian knocked him out in two rounds like he needs more than two rounds for this year david benavides has had one fight in march and supposedly they're talking about a jaime monguia fight later on september october time but again that's two fights when you need to be keeping you need to be keeping sharp making sure that you you're keeping your weight down as well especially if you're looking for that canelo the canelo sweepstakes next year when the mandatory is called they're just not active enough and the thing is it's not even just pbc there's a lot of boxers and a lot of places where they, they ain't active enough it's a lot more prevalent with pbc because they're the only ones that consistently every time that they leave the bubble and leave the island they get found wanting and found exposed and to be fair their model is very similar to ufc they're very insular like that but the difference with the ufc at least is that we don't know if necessarily they have the best mma fighters in the world we don't actually know that but obviously they're the biggest one the biggest world most well known but at least their guys are fighting regularly they fight every three four months sometimes quicker than that and it's a it's a they may not be getting a decent money but it's consistent with the level of guy they're always fighting the best possible competition they can fight for where they are in the rankings if pbc did that i don't think people would complain as much about quote unquote pbc island but if you haven't got the dates again i'll say it again let these guys move on because their careers need to improve or they need to improve or you need to find better talent scouts because at the moment what you're doing with these guys it ain't it and unfortunately stephen Fulton, who is supposed to be one of your best guys is a damning indictment of what your talent and what your roster actually looks like at the moment but look that's my opinion on it i want to know what you guys think so leave your comments down below let me know what you think and am i being too harsh I, you know or you know is this a case is this an actual a, a proper problem that does need to be sorted out um leave your thoughts let me know and yeah thank you very much for watching um i will leave it there obviously more videos to come throughout the week we're getting ready for the big you know the big undisputed fight on the weekend you guys know how i feel about that already but check out those videos and check out everything else that's coming up um after tonight as well but thank you very much for watching and for right now it's the hardcore casual out